What if I told you there was a man that could transcend musical genres? A musician with bluegrass roots that could pick like No Tomorrow, but rocks out on stage like he's in a heavy metal band? Meet Billy Strings. From humble beginnings to headlining festivals and playing at the Grammys, there is no doubt that Billy has an epic story to be heard. But to begin the quest of his origins, we have to go back to this legendary moment. Let's rewind. This freshly written song would be the start of an iconic rise to the top that put him onto everyone's radar. So you ask, how did he do it? To understand how he got in this spot, we have to start from the beginning. So are you ready to uncover the awe-inspiring story of Billy Strings? Let's do it. Billy's journey through life and music is an amazing story of resilience, mentorship, and musical exploration. Born as William Apostle in Lansing, Michigan, he ultimately settled in New York, Michigan, just outside of Ionia. As his biological father passed away from drug-related causes, Billy recalls that ever since he was in diapers, his stepfather Terry was there for him. Terry loved to play bluegrass and showed Billy the ropes as early as age three or four. And just a year or two later, Billy was good enough to be even joining in on Terry and his friends' jam sessions. These times were one of Billy's favorite moments throughout his childhood, and really became the cornerstone of his life. He was put onto artists like Doc Watson, David Grisman, Del McCurry, and other influential legends in the bluegrass space. Before turning the age of 10, he mostly played rhythm and Terry picked, but now he was gifted a red mini Strat and a pig nose amp, and he was ready to rock. Inspired by artists like Jimmy Page, Black Sabbath, and Jimi Hendrix, he delved into soloing, freestyling, and exploring the realms of rock and roll and metal music. This allowed him to break the barriers of just playing bluegrass, and ultimately just improved his skills even more. In his free time, Billy also liked to skateboard, as it provided another outlet than just playing music. With really only playing with older people up until this point and still having his electric guitar, it led him to join a metal band with people his own age. This was refreshing to him because it was nice to have people he can relate to a bit more. You can credit Billy's unique blend of music growing up for having a role in the way Billy performs on stage. He isn't afraid to rock out. I mean, just look at this performance. But at the age of around 16, things took a dark turn for Billy. Drug addiction was taking over the lives of his inner circle. This led to harder things like close friends and family overdosing, committing suicide, and being in and out of prison. He started to notice that his father was using drugs, which led to the start of a harder second half of his childhood. This heavy toll around him made school unbearable, causing him to eventually drop out. Now he was jumping from house to house due to not wanting to be in his own home, but eventually he found himself at his friend Benji's house in about the 10th grade. Eventually Benji's mom allowed him to stay, but only if he went back to school. Billy took up the offer and later credits Benji's mother for being a source of encouragement and care during this tough time of his life. Billy got his diploma and made him feel a sense of worth and purpose. This made him realize that there is more to just his small town he was living in. He had to get out of there, otherwise he might fall back into the trap of drugs. And then I graduated and, and it was great. And that sent me on this path of like, okay, I don't want to be like all my friends who ended up on drugs. I want to do good. He decided that he needed a significant change, pack his bags, and head to Traverse City, Michigan. This would be a fresh start that would be the beginnings of changing everything for him. When he arrived in Traverse City, it was important for Billy to choose his friends wisely. These new friends would make an influence on Billy, but in a positive way, introducing him to acts like Yonder Mountain String Band, String Cheese Incident, and Green Sky Bluegrass. Listening to these groups, this influenced his approach. So you might be wondering, how the heck did Billy Strings get his iconic name? I mean, growing up, people would call him Will, William, Bill, his mom called him Boomer, 
but it wasn't until right before he played a gig at Traverse City that he would make his decision. To understand what he would call himself, we have to bring up his Aunt Mondi. When he was little, Aunt Mondi called him Little Billy Strings, realizing his talent and love for the guitar. Later down the road, Aunt Mondi unfortunately was on her deathbed from cancer, but Billy and his father drove to see her and play for her one last time. After the visit and continuing playing open mic nights in Mondi's honor, he wrote Billy's strings up on a chalkboard right before he played. Billy said, next thing you know, it just took off and we're here. I just got branded just like that. But one day after a gig in Traverse City, he would meet someone that would be super influential in his musical journey. Who was it? The renowned mandolin player, Don Julen. One night after playing, Don took notice of Billy's natural talent and decided to introduce himself. So I had a couple gigs around town. He came to see me play one night. I guess maybe because some of his friends had t told him to come check me out or something. Some kid. Imagine that. Yeah. So I knew of Don Julen and he said, hey man, let's get together and pick some time. And, and I said, yeah, so we did. Billy credits Don for being one of the reasons why he started to believe that he could make a living from playing music in the first place. He realized it was possible. Billy quit his day job from working at one of the hotels in Traverse City, and him and Don joined forces, playing local gigs and even going on tour throughout the United States, playing hundreds of gigs per year. Together they released two albums, both with a mix of bluegrass and folk influences. You'll often find that most of these tunes just have the guitar and mandolin, just like the on-stage performances at the time. Remember this video that we mentioned earlier? Let's revisit it. Billy's friend says, Play the Ioni tune you wrote. Not the one you played earlier. This was Dust in a Baggie. The song that Don and him recorded on one of their albums together and would be on his upcoming solo EP. And what do you think Billy would do if someone told him in this moment he would be forming the same song at the Grand Ole Opry? I used my only phone call to contact my baby. That is just crazy. You knew it was going to be a crowd pleaser. I mean, just look at this dude in the corner. It's important to note that this video was released in 2019, so those who didn't know his music, this was often the video that got them hooked. And for those that did, you're one of the early ones, and I'm sure y'all are grateful that people found him through that video, posted by Lower Standards. Billy talked about the origin of the song in an interview with Wood TV8. Yeah, that, uh... That song I wrote about a friend of mine from around that area, you know, from Lyons. And um, and it's, you know, it was a true story. And, uh, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> After an incredible run with Billy and Don, they decided to play one last show together in Traverse City. And in 2016, Billy moved to Nashville and he decided to pursue his own solo career. I think all Billy fans can appreciate the music him and Don Julian created together and will always have the two albums to listen to if they ever want to go back to their previous work. But now it was Billy's turn to really take things up a notch. Right out of the gate, he released his self titled EP. This EP definitely differed than what he he created with Julian. It was more of a fuller band sound and it really brought the energy. Slow Train and of course Dust in a Baggy were some of the tracks that were popular with listeners. But now as we get into the albums that many listeners have fallen in love with and we know today, you might notice that these are even more different than what we've heard on his previous records and even why some people say he isn't bluegrass. Well, whatever you want to call it, these songs are nothing short of amazing. Since 2017, he's released Turmoil and Tinfoil, Home, and Renewal. I'm not counting the Me and Dad album just because that was a collaborative project between the two, and I wanna do my own little section for that in this video. These three projects are again why a lot of people from all music genres love his music. His own biography on his website says it best. He's one that reveres the history of the acoustic music that inspired him while pushing it forward to new spaces. So what are these new spaces that Billy explores in his three albums? Well, it comes down to a couple of key ingredients. I know we keep mentioning it, but his onstage energy is one like no other. Remember how he developed a love for rock and roll and heavy metal music at a young age? You could say that even though he plays with an acoustic band, he does have rock and metal influences in his music. Listen to Meet Me at the Creek with powerful power chord strumming. And then we have Turmoil and Tinfoil. To me, I could see this easily being dating back to the 80s and 90s, reminiscent of a Metallica track. Through the 
turmoil in the tin foil. It's just the way it used to be. We take a look at Away from the Mire, infusing the blissful yet powerful sound of the electric guitar. And even on his newer work, Hide and Seek does a masterful job of putting rock and metal influences together. I remember. Oh wait, there's more? What about the use of his psychedelic sound in his music? Billy is known for keeping things interesting, and you can just see how much of his musical style has progressed since his time in Traverse City up until now. You often would never find this in his earlier stuff with Jolin, but you can tell just how much Billy has progressed, discovering his own musical style. With all of that jamming and rocking out, Billy knows how to strike a deep chord in your soul with stripped back folk and Americana based songs that will get you in your feels. And secondly, one thing he doesn't get enough credit for is that he's a great singer-songwriter. One of my favorite songs when I think of this is Love and Regret. To me, it's one of his best pieces of work, not because of its great lyrical wordplay and memorable guitar riff, but because of the story behind it. It literally came to him in a dream. Another from Renewal is In the Morning Light. Man, that's just another example of a simply beautiful song that Billy can create. It might be no secret by now that I love the album Renewal. Lastly, Billy reached many folks through his collaborations he's done with big time names. You might think of Luke Combs in The Great Divide with him playing the guitar, Sierra Farrell's Bells of Every Chapel, Molly Tuttle's Dooley Farm, and getting to play with his heroes like Bela Fleck and Del McCurry. But personally, one of my favorite collaborations was with this legendary guy right here, Willie Nelson. Well, I'm California sober as they say. They released California Sober, a straight up country jam with fast guitar picking, fiddle, and the harmonica. This was one of my top played Spotify songs, and just listen to it. It will lift your spirits every time. It was so cool to see him perform for Willie Nelson's 90th birthday concert, and it's clear they have a mutual respect for one another as musicians. But his latest project was a special one. Me and Dad came out in 2022, and it was a collaboration album with the man who taught him the ropes to bluegrass, but most importantly, the one who raised him to be a man, and that was his father, Terry. Remember the dark path his loved ones were on during high school? Well, his parents have been clean for a while now, and it's only appropriate him and his dad do an album together to celebrate all the great years they've had. Songs on the project featured classic bluegrass lick, Long Journey Home, another classic tune covered by many, Dig a Little Deeper in the Well, and the soulful John Deere Tractor. As a father, I bet Terry was so proud to record that album with Billy and just the progression of showing someone the ropes and seeing them succeed and where Billy is now, I bet he was so proud. But I have to tell one more story about their relationship that may blow your mind and it was about Terry selling his guitar. Billy describes that there was a time when things were a bit tough financially and Terry decided that he had to fall back on his last resort and that was selling his Martin guitar that he played for so many years. Of course, Billy protested and insisted that they would figure it out, but he ended up selling it anyways. A few years passed and Billy was wanting to get back into bluegrass and instead of playing mostly rock on the electric guitar. So that meant one thing, he needed an acoustic. So he looked for one online and found a website that was called the Unofficial Martin Guitar Forum. And you won't believe what happens next. And I came across this, it says D93, and I was like, you don't see those very much, you know? So I clicked on it, and it's my dad's guitar, you know? It's got his wear down by the pit guard, it's got the little cracks in the fretboard binding that I remember, you know, it's got his case. Billy eventually messaged the man who was trying to sell his dad's guitar. At first, he was hesitant, but by constant persistence, Billy was able to convince him. And he finally got to open it and just saw the guitar and kind of sat there and started crying. And they pulled it out and he played John Deere Tractor. 
And just like that, John Deere Tractor would be a special song that him and his dad would record together on the album, providing the song with even more meaning. Billy has been grinding at the music game honestly since he was a kid and it's clear that he's not stopping anytime soon. Will we get an album later this year or maybe in 2025? Who knows for sure, but there's one thing for certain. It's going to have that signature Billy sound that we've all come to love and appreciate. And that was the story of the guitar picking prodigy himself, Billy Strings. I'd love to know your favorite song or album in the comments below. Which artist should I do next? And we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. If you would please consider subscribing and liking this video, it definitely helps get the word out for those who love country folk and bluegrass music like Billy Strings. So as promised, I wanna give a shout out for musicians that deserve to be heard. So for this week, we have the duo Lincoln Mash and Heather Atley. And they are gonna be doing big things like recording a full length album, but in the meantime, you can find tons of amazing performances they've done on YouTube. And she cried, Bobby, I always love you. I would have stood by you until the end. But I'd rather see a cold stone above you. Then to see you in the arms of Tina at the teardrop in. I'll promise to leave all of their stuff in the description below so you can definitely check out what they're going to be up to. But other than that, everyone, I'll see you in my next video. Take care.